Hey there, if you know me, you know that I'm all about budget-friendly dinner ideas. So today I'm going to be showing you five new family dinners that you could throw together for only about $5 each. So these dinners will help you on your grocery budget and they're all delicious. So I hope you enjoy it and let's go get started. To kick us off today, we are making this easy cheesy goulash. While we're at the grocery store, I do want to show you the products that we purchased to stay right around $5. So I first grabbed an onion, then I headed over to the meat department and I grabbed one pound of ground turkey. I only used a half a pound of that ground turkey for this specific recipe and I saved the other half a pound of the turkey for a future recipe later on, you just wait and see. Next, I went over to the canned tomatoes and I grabbed a can of petite diced tomatoes with garlic and olive oil. I do like buying the specific can because it does have the added flavor of the oil and the garlic in it. It is delicious. And then I grabbed one box of shells and cheese. This is very inexpensive and it will add quite a bit to your meal. The last thing I grabbed was one block of mozzarella cheese. We will only be using half of this block of cheese for this specific recipe. Now let's go ahead to the house and start start this meal. To the pan on my stove, I have two tablespoons of hot olive oil. I'm adding our half a pound of ground turkey into the pan along with half of the onion that we grabbed from the store. Then I broke the ground turkey up and I started cooking it through. We're going to be adding our seasonings now, just about a half a teaspoon of salt and pepper, and then one teaspoon of Italian seasoning. Cook your ground turkey through at this point. While we have our turkey cooking away, we are going to start on our pasta shells. So to my pot of boiling water, I added that pasta right in there and I cooked it according to the box instructions. Now back over to our turkey that is now cooked, I added in our can of diced tomatoes along with a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, half a teaspoon of salt and pepper, and the cheese packet that came with the box of shells and cheese. I gave this a really good stir to combine the ingredients. I strained our pasta shells, then I added them right into my pan. I gave this a really good stir to coat the pasta shells. Then after I was through with that, I added in our four ounces of mozzarella cheese that I shredded. I gave this a really good stir to melt the cheese down, then it was time to serve it up. Here's my big bowl of dinner. My family absolutely loves this dinner, especially my little toddler Brinley. This does not lack in flavor. It is so, so delicious and you cannot even tell how budget friendly this dinner actually is. Now we're making these super fun pizza pockets. The first thing that we're grabbing from the grocery store is one of these cans of tomato sauce. This is a little trick that I like to do when I'm trying to save money at the grocery store. I buy a can of tomato sauce like that instead of buying one of these jars of pizza sauce because it's significantly cheaper. And when we go back to my house, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to this jar of tomato sauce to make it so, so delicious. The next thing that I'm grabbing is one of these cans of crescent dough or you could use biscuit dough, whatever you prefer. This is very inexpensive. And then the last thing that I'm grabbing from the store is a package of pepperoni or you could grab any of your favorite pizza toppings. To get this recipe started, the first thing that I am doing is pouring our can of tomato sauce in this bowl. Then we're going to be adding plenty of seasoning so it is not bland, a half a teaspoon of pepper and dried basil, then one teaspoon of Italian seasoning. Give this a really good stir, then there you go. You have some delicious pizza sauce that costs near nothing to make. Now over to my sheet pan that I have lined with parchment paper. I unrolled our crescent dough and I am putting a little scoop of that pizza sauce on each crescent triangle. Next, you're going to be placing a little bit of mozzarella cheese on each of the crescent triangles as well. This is just the other half of the mozzarella cheese that we used for the goulash. The last thing I'm adding on is a couple pieces of pepperoni or you could use your favorite pizza toppings and then go ahead and roll these up. Thank you. 
After I was finished rolling up all of our pizza pockets, I sprayed the top of them with a little bit of avocado oil spray. Then I sprinkled them with a little bit of Italian seasoning for extra flavor. This baked on 375 degrees for about 13 to 15 minutes or until the tops were golden brown. And you might be wondering what I am doing with the excess pizza sauce that we made up. I typically just keep it in a Tupperware container or a little bag and I just store it in my freezer until the next time I need to use it. Here's what they look like out of the oven and ready to enjoy. They are beautifully golden brown on the outside and nice and cheesy on the inside. This is such an inexpensive little pizza night that you can make at home with your family. This is so quick to throw together. I'm sure you'll love this recipe. Now we're making these black bean enchiladas. The first thing that we're grabbing from the grocery store are beans, of course, and typically pinto beans are the least expensive bean at the store, and they were today, but I haven't used black beans in quite a while, and I've been craving them recently, so I wanted to give these black beans a try, and I'm excited to show you how I cook them. The next thing that I grabbed was a bag of corn tortillas. Corn tortillas are always very budget-friendly, and then I grabbed a can of enchilada sauce. As you see down here, this 10 ounce can of enchilada sauce is close to $2, whereas this 28 ounce inch can of enchilada sauce is $2. So this is significantly cheaper price per ounce. So I grabbed the bigger jar of enchilada sauce. The last thing I grabbed was an eight ounce block of cheese. I only used half of the amount of cheese for this recipe. Now that we're back at my house, we're going to start on the enchiladas. So I have my pound of black beans I poured in my over the sink strainer. I'll try to leave all the products I used in today's video linked in my Amazon store for you. But I poured the beans in there and now I'm sorting through the beans, just removing all the bad beans, you know, just the imperfect ones. And then I rinsed the beans with cold water to remove any dirt on the outside. Now I'm bringing the clean beans over to my Instant Pot. As you could tell, we are making these beans in the Instant Pot today. If you don't have an Instant Pot or don't wanna use one, you can make these beans over your stove or in the slow cooker. I also added in six cups of water, two tablespoons of olive oil for the seasonings, two bay leaves, a teaspoon of oregano, half a tablespoon of chili powder, and a tablespoon of salt. I gave this a really good stir. I put the lid on top and I set the little valve to sealing. I pressed the bean button and I put the time up to about 30 minutes. Then I pressed start. I did a natural release at the end for about 10 minutes. Then this is what my beans look like in the very end. They are so, so tender and delicious. I did remove the two bay leaves at this point as well. To assemble our enchiladas, I have my 9 by 13 baking dish. To the bottom of the baking dish, I added a little under a cup of that enchilada sauce. Then I added six of our corn tortillas. Over those corn tortillas, add some of your black beans. I did drain my black beans just so the enchiladas would not be soggy at the end. I repeated this process three times to make three different layers. On the very top, I added four ounces of our shredded sharp cheddar cheese. I put this in the oven to bake on 375 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes. Here's my plate of food. I topped my enchiladas with tomatoes and cilantro that I already had on hand, but these black bean enchiladas are amazing because they're packed full of fiber, potassium, and vitamin B6, so they are so healthy for you, and they will leave you full for hours. They are also so, so yummy. Now we're making this potato, bacon, and turkey casserole. The first thing that we are grabbing are these real bacon pieces. These are nice because they are very affordable and you do not need to cook bacon at your home. It is already pre-cooked for you. The next items that we are grabbing are these huge potatoes. Potatoes are very budget friendly and they are a filling type of food, so they'll leave you full for hours. And they also do have plenty of nourishing vitamins in them. 
Over to my dairy section, I grabbed this eight ounce container of sour cream and I really can't believe how much prices have increased at my local grocery stores recently. Now that we're back at the house, we are going to start this dinner. To the pan on my stove, I added two tablespoons of olive oil. Once my oil was hot, I added in my half of an onion that I diced along with the remaining half a pound of our ground turkey. I broke the ground turkey up and I cooked it through at this point. Now that we have our turkey crumbled up and cooked through, we are going to add in our seasonings to give this plenty of flavor. A half a teaspoon of pepper, a dash of salt, a half a teaspoon of paprika, onion powder, and garlic powder. I gave this a little stir and then I set it to the side. We're going to start on our potatoes now. I have my nifty little shredder gadget right here. This is my all-time favorite shredder. I'll leave it linked for you in my Amazon store, but as you see, I am just shredding up our potatoes at this point. In this large bowl, I have all of our potatoes that we shredded up right in there. And then we are going to be adding our eight ounce container of sour cream right in there. Next, we are going to be adding our ground turkey mixture that we cooked up a little bit earlier. Now we're going to be tossing in our little bag of real bacon pieces. And of course this needs flavor. So I added in a half a teaspoon of paprika, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, and pepper. Then I gave this a really good stir. I place this in my large greased casserole dish. I spread it out as even as possible. Then over the top, I sprinkled the remaining four ounces of our shredded sharp cheddar cheese. And then over the cheese, I did save a little bit of our bacon pieces to sprinkle over the top so they look pretty. This baked on 375 degrees for about 30 to 35 minutes. This is quite a delicious casserole. It is packed full of protein from all of that turkey in it. I kind of made this up on the spot one day and my family has loved it since. This is very, very budget friendly and it will feed quite a few people. You'll love it. You can't get any simpler than this. We are making pot stickers and teriyaki noodles now. At my Walmart, they have this little box of pot stickers. There's about nine to 10 pot stickers in this box. And it also comes with a sauce, so it is a pretty good deal for the amount of pot stickers in this box. So I picked that up. I also went over to the sides area and I picked up this little bag of Knorr um, sides. It is the teriyaki noodle sides. I have made this very many times but I need to make it more often these teriyaki noodles are good now to get this recipe started I started on the teriyaki noodles first in my pot I just followed the instructions on the back of this bag so I added in our water along with our oil and I brought this up to a boil once it did start boiling I added in the bag and of course I just followed the instructions on the bag for our pot stickers, I'm just making them in my pan. If you haven't made pot stickers in a while or you don't typically make them, you need to. They really are delicious. I'm making all of the pot stickers in the box today for my family just because we pretty much eat all of them when we do eat pot stickers. So I just followed the instructions on the box and I made these pot stickers up. Here's what the teriyaki noodles look like after they are through cooking. My house was smelling so, so good at this point. And now here are the pot stickers after they have steamed and they are perfectly crispy on the bottom. This is the perfect meal to make if you are short on time and if you're on a budget. I topped everything with sesame seeds and I served the pot stickers with some of the sauce that it came with. This really is a delicious throw together meal. I have plenty more budget-friendly dinner ideas like this on my channel, so make sure you're subscribed down below the video so you don't miss any more in the future. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.